Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today looked at how process hollowing is used by Python malware on Windows. Process hollowing is not a technique that's typically associated with Python. Process hollowing uses a benign process, let's say Notepad or uh, Internet Explorer or these days Chromes and such. And it then, if the process is currently suspended, injects malicious code into the process's address space so now the malicious code is executed as part of this benign process. So the particular program will not be changed on disk. It will just be changed in memory. And of course, that makes it more difficult to then detect the malicious uh, code. Now, this certainly sounds like a complex trick to pull off and something uh, people may more associate with software written specifically for Windows in languages like C, but well, it turns out that Windows actually has an API for this and there's some benign software that actually uses that same technique, which first of all, makes it easier uh, to employ this trick, but also there is a Python library that will actually allow you to call Windows APIs. And with that, it opens it up to languages like Python. As typical for Python, someone else already did all the hard work for you. There is a PyMem package that allows you to manipulate the memory of Windows processes. All that hacker needs to do is include about four lines of code in order to take advantage of uh, this uh, technique. And Xavier actually shows an example code snippet that Xavier found out in the wild as part of a diary. The snippet uh, looks like a simple backdoor and Xavier points out that this may actually uh, have been uh, intended to be used as part of a penetration test or a test of the technique more than a valid uh, working uh, malware sample. And then in news that shouldn't really surprise anybody, uh, the death of Queen Elizabeth is uh, being abused as a lure by fishers. I personally have not yet seen an example, but for example, Proofpoint published a quick report, at least on Twitter, about how the event is being used to steal Microsoft 365 credentials. The email uh, Proofpoint published is sort of tricky in that it looks like it comes from Microsoft, invites the recipient to view an online memorial Microsoft put together for Queen Elizabeth. And of course, some companies have put web pages and uh, such uh, like this together. Needless to say, uh, you will be asked to enter your credentials, including a second factor. And the credentials will then, of course, get stolen. That's why we call it uh, phishing and they will be abused. Apparently, they're using something like evil proxy and such to also capture that second factor. Any major news story like this is bound to be abused. So, just a quick reminder that any movie file attachments, websites and such that relate to a current event like this, treat them with caution and also makes a good sort of awareness training kind of a plugin. One issue with patches I see users complain the most about is that they, well, appear to get uh, automatically applied at the most inconvenient time, disrupting your workflow, or, well, uh, then they get applied uh, when you shut down your computer. Problem, of course, is you usually shut down your computer because you want to go somewhere, and then it tells you you have to wait for the patch to be completely applied. Microsoft realized, uh, I guess after 30 years or so, that uh, people aren't quite happy with this. So uh, they now are experimenting with a different technique, which currently covers uh, your Microsoft 365 applications, uh, which is essentially sort of the office suite of products, in particular the retail versions. The software is now updated while the computer is locked or idle. To minimize the impact uh, of these updates, so the idea is, hey, your computer is locked, uh, let's use that time while you're not looking at the screen anyway uh, to apply these updates. There's one little complications here. Updates usually require that the application has to be closed. So applications are shut down 
if it's safe to do so according to Microsoft. Otherwise, of course, the update will not be applied. And after the update is applied, the application is being restored into its pre-update state. Have to see how well this works, but sounds like a good idea to limit the impact and inconvenience of some of these updates. Well, and that's it uh, for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.